Lucha Secret Luminare Moketra Uri Sosaran Purzolung Utra Kornani Uzwar Fakung Deva Purjichi Seva Kurung Amcha Guincha Dorm Prantan Nivas Bandla Raiturcha Gavan Gor Sang Rasa Te Akarneche B. Uzota Padri Ponache When the Portuguese arrived in South Goa, they intended to spread the gospel in South Goa. And so they built this seminary in 1610 and it was at the orders of King Sebastian of Portugal. Goa was a blessed soil of the Portuguese in India. But they founded nine large educational institutions which in frame the fire of divine love helped them to preach the gospel to the lands of India, China, Japan, Moluccas and Africa. Today these educations are in ruins. They remind of the efforts put by the heralds of the gospel for the future generations. Of the nine, what remains today is the seminary of Rashaw, which was for 300 years established and run by the Jesuits until 1835. And now they have been taken over by the diocese of clergy. In 1610, on the 1st of November, this seminary was inaugurated under the name All Saints College. And it was mainly for studying of theology, school for the catechumens, a hospice, learning of the language, and the spread of the gospel. This continued for years till in the late 16th century or better 17th century the Jesuits were thrown out from all the Portuguese colonies including Rome and this seminary was taken over by the diocese and handed over to the Oratorians and the Vincentians to run, run, go ahead. And it was called the Good Shepherd Seminary. However, before that, when the Jesuits were still running the seminary, and when St. Ignatius was declared a saint, this seminary was called St. Ignatius College. Now, the Oratorians and the Vincentians continued to rule this or run the seminary till 1845. And then they were also thrown out of the Portuguese colonies by the Portuguese government. From then on, this has become the Archdiocese Seminary or the Archdiocese major seminary. The seminary of Rashal is doing a yeoman service in the vineyard of the Lord. Gold priests are well known for their dedicated services in Goa and other dioceses of India in many parts of the world. The present-day Rashol Seminary was formerly a Jesuit college. However, it has its beginning in Marga. It was started as a college in Marga attached to the Church of Holy Spirit. However, within five years of its establishment on 17th May 1574, it was burned down by the Bijapuri troops 
and it had to be relocated to the village of Rashor because Rashor was a fortified village and it provided a security. But it was becoming inconvenient and hence again it had to be taken back to Margao because Margao was centrally located and it was becoming easier to exercise the pastoral ministry. But finally, for the same reason it had to be brought to the present site where the present Rashal Seminary stands today. For two reasons it was brought here. First, because of the security and secondly, the environment was conducive for good health. And the place where the present Rashal Seminary is situated is known as Persianchi Dongri, which was donated to the college by Agustino Denis. Let us now explore this historical structure in minute detail. We are standing at the entrance of Rashal Seminary and over here we can notice the coat of arms of King Don Sebastian. And below that coat of arms we can read the inscription which is in Portuguese that says coat of arms of King Don Sebastian, founder of this college. Don Sebastian was a king of Portugal but he died much before the construction of this college began. So he is considered as a founder in the sense that he created an endowment for the college of Salzade from the proceeds of fields and properties. We are at the entrance of the Rashol Seminary and this entire wall that we see over here is supported on one granite pillar. On this pillar we can see the seminary coat of arms. It is in an oval form. In the upper half we can see the sacred heart, a book with an engraved keys of Saint Peter. At the center is the star and below it there is a globe with a map of India. The sacred heart symbolizes the holiness, whereas the book symbolizes the knowledge and the keys of Saint Peter symbolizes the obedience to the Pope and the teachings of the Church. The seminarians are called to radiate the holiness and wisdom all over the globe. This entire coat of arms is set on an archiepiscopal cross which indicates that the seminary is an archdiocesan seminary and below it are the words Lucius Sicut Luminare which is the motto of the Rashol seminary. The archdiocese was declared the patriarchate and the first patriarch was the Valent. At that time on this seminary is now called the Patriarchal Seminary of Russia. At the entrance, we also can notice some four frescoes. They are the last four things. First, the death. Secondly, the judgment. And thirdly, the heaven and hell, the person goes. In the seminary, there is an abundant use of black granite stones. They are used for the flow as well as for the staircases. The stones are not locally available. It is said that the ships that were trading in Goa will carry these stones in the ship so as to maintain balance and not to get drift away. Here in Goa, they will empty these stones and reload the ship with spices and other commodities and later the stones were made use in the constructions. Friends, I am outside the Rushall Seminary Church which is, which is adjoined to the seminary. Now looking at the facade of the church, we can determine that this particular church is from the era of the Renaissance Baroque period and that's why the predominant style that we see is Renaissance Baroque style. Let us now move on to the interior of the church and view it amazingly. Prior to the canonization of Saint Ignatius de Loyola, that is in 1622, and if one would have visited the seminary church, 
they will have not seen the Ratab as it is now. They will have seen the images of all saints because the seminary church when it was started in 1610 was dedicated to all saints. Only after 1622 the seminary church found its patron in Saint Ignatius de Loyola since the seminary church was built by the Jesuits. In the center we see the patron that is Saint Ignatius de Loyola. On top we see the crucifix and on the either sides we see Saint Peter and Saint Paul the two apostles of Jesus. Going below, that is on the either sides of Saint Ignatius de Loyola, we see some eminent saints of the Jesuit order. On the right hand side, we see Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, and on the left hand side of Saint Ignatius de Loyola, we see Saint Stanislaus Kostaka. Coming below, we see a very famous personality of the who came to Goa to preach Christ, that is Saint Francis Xavier. And on the other side, Saint Francis Borgia. In the middle, we see a three-tiered tabernacle. Now initially, during the olden days, the blessed sacrament from this tabernacle was exposed for 40 hours of adoration. And this would usually take place during the carnival days. But now, this particular adoration is not in existence and we usually expose the Blessed Sacrament for a day only on two major events that is during the Vespers or the Novenas of Sacred Heart of Jesus and one during the Lenten season. Running our gaze on the side walls of the sanctuary, we see various life episodes of our patron saint that is Saint Ignatius de Loyola. Starting, we see the monogram of the Society of Jesus, that is the Jesuit order. Moving on further, we see Saint Ignatius de Loyola whipping himself. On the other hand side, we see Saint Ignatius de Loyola receiving the name of his order, that is the Society of Jesus. Whereas on the other side, some of the events that we can see is the elevation of Saint Ignatius de Loyola when he was in prayer. Also, we see Saint Ignatius de Loyola curing a woman from tuberculosis. And also another famous miracle of Saint Ignatius de Loyola, that is Saint Ignatius de Loyola curing a boy who had epileptic. Now what is peculiar to this wooden uh, flanks is that, that one can see creepers or cajus being carved on them. Now what we can assume for our understanding is that the Jesuit order who had come and who are building this structure might have used the expertise of local artisans when they were building this church and hence the carvings symbolize Goa and particularly India. I am now standing in the sanctuary of the church of the seminary of Rashol. Here from a larger view, we can see the top part of the sanctuary, where we can notice the monogram of the Jesuit order, which has the letters I, H, S. Now these three letters are the first three letters, Greek letters of the word for Jesus. On top, we see Paul Mickey, and on the, both the extreme sides, we see his companions, that is, on the left hand side, we see Daigo Kisai, and on the right hand side, we see Zuan Oto. Now, this particular saints were martyrs in the land of Japan. Prior to the building of the seminary, they were martyred. So, we find them being situated in this church in a very prominent place. Now, moving to the side altars, on the left hand side of the main altar, we see the side altar dedicated to Our Lady of Rosary. This particular statue was brought from the convent of St. Francis of Assisi, Old Goa. On the right hand side of the main altar, we see the altar dedicated to infant Jesus. Now, according to the history of this statue, this statue 
was brought from Africa by Father Bento Ferreira, a Jesuit priest. And he brought it and kept it in the Kolwa church where he was the parish priest. But later on, when he was transferred to the Rushall College, he brought this statue along with him and placed it on this altar. Well, on the walls of the church, we can see small round granite stones with a cross embedded on it. Now this is a sign that the church is dedicated. And this dedication of the church was done by Archbishop Alessio de Menezes. And this is commemorated annually in the seminary on the 28th of May. As soon as one enters the seminary church from the front door, on the very left hand side, we see a small chapel with an altar containing the relics of Saint Constance the Martyr. Now the seminary has a history where it went from the Jesuits to the Oratorians, later on to the Vincentines. And during the stay of the Vincentines, they brought the relics of Saint Constance the Martyr to the seminary. And we have it embedded in this small chapel over here. On the right hand side, after entering the seminary church from the front door, we have a small chapel with an altar dedicated to the sacred heart of Jesus. And below lies the dead body of Christ, that is Sinor Mort. Now usually, during the olden days, people used to usually venerate this particular statue when they went to the parish church during the commemoration of the Passion. Now I'm standing on the pulpit of the seminary church. A stone staircase leads us to this place from the corridor of the seminary church. It is from this very place that Father Agnello de Souza, the spiritual director then, collapsed with a major heart attack from this place, that is while preaching the Vespers for the Sacred Heart of Jesus Feast on the 19th of November, 1927. We are at the entrance of the seminary church and that is a tombstone outside the main church of the seminary. It is a tombstone of Inacio de Mello. It had an inscription which today has become illegible due to wear and tear over the years. The inscription read as Tomb of Inacio de Mello and his wife Esperanza, Gaunkar of this village, and for the love of God, please recite one Our Father and Hail Mary. Probably, Inacio was a benefactor of this college and he bears the same name as the titular of this church. His mortal remains were buried over here, probably when the church of St. Ignatius de Loyola was exercising the functions of the parish church. The original structure of the Rashal Seminary is in quadrangle, which was constructed in the early 17th century. The new wing as well as the library and the educational block are later additions. However, even the original structure of the seminary has undergone several changes over the period of time. In order to accommodate increasing number of seminarians, this new wing was constructed in 19th century, which consists of 40 single rooms. The upper corridor has 20 rooms and the down corridor also has a 20 rooms. The Rashal Seminary Library was constructed in 1885. It has num numerous books on various topics, both religious as well as secular. Some of its books are a very rare collection. These books are found in the languages, namely English, Portuguese, Italian, Latin. Swami Vivekananda visited this library continuously for three days, that is from 15th to 17th October in the year 1892. He came to this library to learn about Christianity before proceeding to the Parliament of Chicago 
to deliver his famous speech. This house was a multi-purpose institution. It also housed a printing press which was third one in Goa. It functioned for almost 60 years in this college and published 16 books. The chief ones among them are Krista Purana of Father Thomas Stephen which was in Marathi on the life of Jesus Christ. The second one was Dotrina Krista, a book on Konkani Catechism. And third one was Arte de Lingua Canari, which was a book on Konkani Grammar. This new educational block with spacious classroom and auditorium was constructed by demolishing the old educational block during the rectorship of Father Thomas Sequeira. The old block was built during the Oratorian administration. It had a chapel dedicated to Our Lady of the Lords, in which an inaugural mass before the academic year was celebrated. This refectory was constructed during the rectorship of Father Bento Ferreira in the 17th century. There are two beautiful murals that adorn this beautiful refectory, one of the Last Supper and the other of St. Francis Xavier. There is also a pulpit from where the spiritual reading is done and the male's prayers are said. Formerly, this refectory was used by both the priest as well as the seminarians. But today, it is refectory only for the students. Within this courtyard of the seminary, there was a cloister which has now vanished except for the pillars that we can see over here. Also there is a cistern with a tunnel attached to it. It was used to harvest the rain water and the excess water will flow out from the tunnel. But according to some, this cistern also served as a refuge place during the times of attacks and the tunnel was used as an escape route. From the cistern, we can also see the shell windows of the seminary. The advantage of having these shell windows are that the sunlight can penetrate inside the building. In this courtyard, there are two sundial watches, one made of a granite and the other is of a wall painting clock. In the 1800s, the wall painting clock was used to ring the church bell. It is also likely that it was used to ring the bell which is in the courtyard for the daily activities of the seminary. We are now in the chapel of the Good Shepherd. This is the place where the seminarians have the, their daily Eucharistic celebration. This chapel is dedicated to the Good Shepherd and we can see the painting of the Good Shepherd at the top of the high altar. There are also many other paintings around this that adorn these beautiful walls. They are the, it depicts the passion and death of Jesus Christ. Now on the right we have a room which was traditionally kept for the spiritual father of the seminary. Now it is left as a memorial to Venerable Father Agnel de Souza who was a spiritual director in this seminary and lived in this room from 1918 to 1927. On the 20th of November of 1927, he, he suffered a massive heart attack while he was preaching the previous day on the Vespers of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And he passed away in this room itself at 5 a.m. in the morning. We are now in the infirmary corridor and the corridor gets its name as infirmary because there is a room here which was traditionally used as an infirmary for the seminarians. But now we are here because this corridor is famous also for another um, important 
aspect and that is the paintings that are above each of the door. These paintings are by Angelo de Fonseca which were painted by S.K. Parab in the year 1943 to 1944. These paintings are beautiful depictions of the life of Jesus, the various events from his birth till his crucifixion till his resurrection. Always we have seen these paintings from a western point of view, western figures. But here we have the paintings which shows an Indian depiction of each of these life events of Jesus. Now from the infirmary corridor, we enter the prophet's corridor. And as the name suggests, the paintings here are of the prophets. We have on my left, I have five paintings of the prophets. The major prophets, prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, also the prophet Joel and prophet Daniel. And on my right, we have the four paintings of the evangelist. St. Mark, St. Matthew, St. Luke and St. John. And all of these paintings culminate with the picture of Salvador de Mundo, that is Mother Mary holding Christ Jesus in, his, in her arms, who is the savior of the world. So all the prophets, all the evangelists, they culminate with the life and the good news of Jesus Christ. Presently, we are in the hall of Don Sebastian. Now it is also known as the Rector's Parlor. Now there are many beautiful portraits around this hall. And the most one that takes our attention is the painting or the portrait of Don Sebastian. Now this is the fourth painting if we take all the four. There were four portraits before this. Now the first one was made by an Italian artist. It was somewhere at the end of the 17th century. The second one was made when the auditorians were in Rush Hall Seminary because the first one deteriorated, they made the second one. Now the third painting was made by a person from Rush Hall himself, he was an engineer and the fourth one that we see right now here is made in 1892, it was commissioned by General Francisco de Assa. Now when we look at this painting, we see Don Sebastia on a horseback in the middle of a battlefield. There are few things around this painting that we can see. Now on the top left corner, we see the coat of arms of the king. On the top right corner, we have the inscription El Rey do Sebastião Fundador de este Colegio. It means the king, Don Sebastião, founder of this college. Now when we come down, on the left bottom corner, we see a signature and also a date. Now this signature is of General Francisco de Assa who had commissioned this painting and down we see there are the wooden panels that support this huge painting. So on each of the panel there is a date inscribed as 1892 to show the date when this painting or this portrait was put in place. There are many beautiful portraits that adorn this hall of Don Sabastia. The central most that we see is the portrait of Don Sebastian and the second one is the portrait of the first patriarch of East Indies that is just opposite the painting of Don Sebastian that is Archbishop Patriarch Antonio Sebastian Valent. The painting right now is taken for restoration so it is not there but we can go to the next one that is the second patriarch of East Indies and he is the 29th Archbishop of Goa and Daman, that is Don Matthews de Oliveira Xavier. This is the portrait of the 29th Archbishop of Goa and Daman. Then we go to the next, the third Patriarch of East Indies and the 30th Archbishop of Goa and Daman, that is Don Teotonio Emmanuel Vieira de Castro, fourth and the fifth. Patriarch of the East Indies is on the other side of the hall. We have the fourth Patriarch of East Indies, that is the 31st Archbishop of Goa and Daman, Don Jose da Costa de Nunes. On my right, I have Don Jose Vieira Alvernas. He is the 32nd Archbishop of Goa and Daman and the fifth Patriarch of the East Indies. On my right, we have the portrait of Archbishop Emeritus, 
Raul Nicolau Gonsalves and on the left we have the picture of the present Archbishop of Goa and Daman, Archbishop Philip Neri Ferrand. We now enter the corridor of the Patriarchs that, that is the founders and the inspirers of the religious institutes and movements. They are namely Saint Augustine, Saint Benedict, Saint Dominic, Saint Francis of Assisi, Saint Francis de Paula, Saint John Baptist de la Salle, Saint Ignatius of Loyola and Saint John Bosco. All of these wall paintings were, were painted by S. K. Parab in the years 1943 to 1944. Now as we come to the end of the corridor, to the left we see a huge painting by Raphael which was painted by S. K. Parab himself in the year 1944. This painting looks beautiful and it has great explanation to be given on it. Now when we see this painting, the most central most figure that we can see is the Blessed Eucharist or the Blessed Sacrament in the middle. This painting is known as the dispute and triumph of the Blessed Sacrament. And that's the reason the main focus is on the Blessed Sacrament. At the end of the corridor of Patriarchs, we have the painting featuring Saint Philip Neri along with Saint Bartholomew and Saint Joseph Vaz. Saint Philip Neri is handing over the book of the Constitutions of the Congregation of the Auditorians to Saint Bartholomew and Saint Joseph Vaz. Now we are entering the corridor of the professors. Here behind me we have the Archbishop's room. To the right we have the room of his secretary and this used to be the refectory of the Archbishop. And there are two paintings of Saint Francis Xavier in the refectory that we shall be seeing. The former refectory of the Archbishop is now being used as a reading center for the priests. Also the secretary room, uh, the former secretary room is now being used as a cloak room. But in this refectory or this reading center right now, we have two beautiful paintings that adorn this wall. On my left, we have the painting of Saint Francis Xavier. We see that he has many crosses in his hand and there are many other crosses that are awaiting him. So this painting shows the crosses that await Saint Francis Xavier in his missionary work. On the right, we have the painting of Saint Francis Xavier on the island of Sanchian in China, where he breathed his last. Now friends, we shall proceed to the corridor of the professors to see the beautiful paintings about each and every door. We are now in the corridor of the professors. There are 11 rooms here and above the door of each room, there are the paintings by famous artists like Murillo, Tarziano, Lippi, which were painted by S. K. Parab in the years sacristy corridor. Now there are 11 rooms in this corridor which are occupied by the seminarians. Above each of these rooms there is a painting which depicts the litany of Loreto. So there are the first 11 invocations of the litany. Now these frescoes they look really beautiful and there is a lot of discussion about when were these frescoes painted. So, were they painted, painted when the Jesuits were ruling or occupying this place or was it later after the expulsion when the Orientarians used this as a seminary? 
so there are many um, discussions regarding the same thing but we believe that maybe it is most probably after the Jesuits that these frescoes were made because in the very second fresco which we will see later we have Saint Dominic and Saint Franz, uh, Francis of Assisi they were great devotees of Mother Mary and there were also in some of the other painting there is Pope Sixtus the fourth and there is also a depiction of a, a Franciscan monks now they are depicted because the devotion of Mother Mary is great in the order of Saint Dominic and also in the Franciscans now if it was built during or if it was painted during the uh, time when the Jesuits were there then surely Saint Ignatius who is also a great devotee of our Virgin Mother Mary would at least be in one of the 11 paintings so this is the first argument that supports that maybe it was later after the Jesuits the second one is as we will see later each of this is beautifully painted and it is still preserved well so if these frescoes are so beautiful and preserved well even now so maybe it is in a later stage Jesuits were men of science they were architects, cartographers, astronomers and so on they involved or they engaged in science to many ways such as teaching scientific disciplines carrying out astronomical observation involving in public debates and so on the birth of telescopic observation in India is credited to Goa of which the College of Rashal was part in the year 1618 two comets appeared in the sky and they were observed by the Jesuits from three places in Goa namely Old Goa, Divar and Russia. At Russia, the first comet was observed by Father Jacobus Rho, while the second comet was observed by Father Johannes Terencius from the fields of Russia Seminary. My name is Katerina Goodhart. I'm half English, half Italian, living in London. We came five years ago to Russia Seminary, invited by Father Rector Alessio Meneses who inquired if we could help him with the conservation of the artifacts here in the seminary. I realized that in Goa you have many 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 beautiful churches, many 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 beautiful artifacts and unfortunately not enough people to conserve and look after this immense and beautiful heritage. So we said yes but we were quite frightened by the daunting prospect of conserving and sometimes restoring. Our primary aim was to conserve, make sure that mainly the paintings and you have here, you have here about eight paintings, you have your first Archbishop Primate of the East Indies, all beautifully painted and you also have King Sebastian behind me who was in a terrible state, was torn, had been sewn together. It's a very, very, very heavy canvas. And I said yes, but I knew that I couldn't do it on my own. So with the help of one of the top Italian restorers and other conservators from around Europe, and some conservators as far as from China and Canada, they said yes, and together we came to Rachel. At present, this is the major seminary of the Archdiocese of Goa and Daman. And it has got a course of philosophy, theology, intercepted by Regency. The seminarians joined the minor seminary and after doing the orientation year day, they come here for the philosophy course, which at present is three years followed by the Regency year, followed by four years of theology, at the end of which they are ordained deacons, and then they go to Old Goa for the pastoral enrichment course of one year, after which they are ordained priests. Perhaps in the near future, the system may change and for the better. At present, in this house, 
we have seminarians from all over Goa and they are for the archdiocese of Goa. This formation is fourfold. That's why we call it an integral formation. We exist upon human formation, spiritual formation, intellectual formation, pastoral formation. The human formation is insisted upon because unless and until you become a good human person, you cannot become a good Christian or a good priest. And therefore, the human qualities, all round human qualities are given and the seminarians are helped to grow in that. And that's why there are various means. Some of the means are like manual work, sports, cultural activities, etc. In the intellectual formation also, we have a very good library, very equipped classrooms. And in this way, the seminarians prepare themselves in the modern way of understanding philosophy and theology so that they will be able to guide, lead the people in the parishes later. Priests of the Dice of the Assembly of Rashaw, as I mentioned to you earlier, they worked in many places of India and other parts of the world. It produced many missionaries who served difficult to be in areas that I need to mention a few who were raised to high position in the Archdiocese where they worked. Dorothy Ribeza Santana, who was my rector at Sanigao Seminary. He was chosen the Bishop of Sadabadir in Angola. We had soon after another Bishop, Lord Zekulas from Margao, who became a bishop of uh, Timor, where many dozen priests, he took over them and for years they worked in Timor, people remind, remember them. We have uh, another bishop from Margao, who is a Fortunat Vega Kutini, who was a young priest, all devout men, intelligent, who was a bishop of Algon. And like this there were many other personalities, priests, who did excellent service in the vineyard of the Lord in the mission areas. Today the church yearns to have pastors under the heart of Christ. The reading and studying of the word of God, silence, solitude and asceticism integrate one's sacramental life into one's formation. And the means to achieve this objective are through the meaningful celebration of the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation, the liturgy of the, of the hours, sessions in liturgy, and the cycle spiritual growth sessions. The fruit of this objective is seen in the personal commitment of the seminarians towards the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation. Also the fruits are seen in their commitment to live the word of God in their daily lives, particularly through their concern for one another, their concern for the poor. Every week they visit the poor, the sick, the lonely.
Catholic priest should have the basic knowledge of music in view of his pastoral ministry even though he might not be a professional musician the document of the church musicam sacram exhorts us to preserve the treasury of the sacred music and to teach and practice music in seminaries keeping this in mind the patriarchal seminary of rashol pays utmost importance towards the formation of music of the seminarians namely polyphonic gregorian chant and liturgical music the apostleship of prayer was started under the patronage of the sacred heart of jesus with a solemn eucharistic celebration the exposition of the blessed sacrament and our procession the practice of which is continued till date every friday we the entire community we gather over here before the altar of the sacred heart of jesus to pray the rosary of the sacred heart of jesus musicam sacram number 6 states i quote the pipe organ is to be held in high esteem for it is the traditional musical instrument that adds a wonderful splendor to the church's ceremonies and powerfully lifts up the spirit to god and to higher things unquote in goa we have had a very few pipe organs from the late medieval era in some of our churches most of which are non functioning the pipe organ here at rashol seminary is still in a working condition during the liturgical ceremonies on sunday and solemnities this pipe organ together with the seminary string accompanies the choir and the congregation which brings grandeur and solemnity to the liturgy the santa cecilia asia's oldest polyphonic male choir is composed of 16 seminarians of our seminary it was established on the 11th of april 1897 and still it continues to function and dedicates itself to promote the sacred music heritage of the roman catholic church of our archdiocese i have been the student of this seminary for 8 years then i have been a professor of this seminary for 10 years and then i have been now for this is my 7th year as the rector of this seminary i am proud of the rashol seminary because not only because of its history not only because of its art and architecture but because the priests that are formed here serve the whole archdiocese of goa as assistant parish priests as chaplains and as parish priests in the academic curriculum seminarians are taught to read and write solfeggio for 3 years as a part of their philosophical course they learn liturgical music they learn indian music they learn gregorian chant as a part of theology course interested seminarians are also given training to learn musical instruments like violin viola cello double bass flute clarinet saxophone trumpet horn trombone euphonium etc i wish that the musical formation of the rashol seminarians will help our future priests to edify the liturgical participation of the faithful through the music in the archdiocese of goa and daman i feel happy 
to be here at the Rashal Seminary and offer my services in the capacity of a spiritual director. I owe a lot to my alma mater, the Rashal Seminary, because this is the place where I found myself. This is the place where I sought spiritual guidance. This is the place where I strived to grow in my relationship with Jesus. And even till date, as I execute my responsibilities here as a spiritual director, I continue to grow as a priest unto the heart of Jesus. Times have changed and the needs and expectations are different today. I don't want to speak of generation gap. What I see is very positive and to be applauded. I'm very happy to observe that the formation imparted today is composite and integral. Everything stated by me augurs a promising future. But this depends on their firm and faithful commitment to their vocation. May God bless the seminary and our seminarians. We, the staff members who are at present, 13 of us, resident staff members, besides, there are all, there are many others who come as visiting professors, aim only at one goal, and that is that we may form seminarians to be priests after the heart of Jesus, so that they may lead people to Jesus. The motto of this seminary is Lucius Sicut Luminari, which means be lights that you may light others, that you may enlighten others. And this is what we yearn to achieve in this house of formation for our seminarians. Oh, my God.